Hey guys, welcome to another movie review. Today I'm going to be talking about Fantastic Beasts 2, The Crimes of Grindelwald. Um, I'm a very big Harry Potter fan. I actually really liked that first Fantastic Beasts film, just called Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Um, I remember when the books came out for Harry Potter. I remember when, um, actually for those who really remember me from way, way back in the day, in third grade, I believe, I got to be in a Harry Potter play in which I got to play Harry Potter in it. So that was a lot of fun. Um, but, you know, Harry Potter has been a big part of my life. I actually got to be a part of a Harry Potter wedding earlier this year with uh, two friends of mine who got married. Um, so it's a very, this is a very big franchise for me. It's a very big franchise for my family as my brother's very big in this franchise too. Um, you know, I love several of the Harry Potter films. And like I said, I really did enjoy that first Fantastic Beast film a lot. So I went into this film hoping for a lot. Um, certain things I was looking for that was going to be like a continuation of the first, um, with this being a sequel and everything. And unfortunately, it's not that great of a movie. Um, but let me go over kind of what this film is about without going into spoilers. And then I can go over some things that I liked and really didn't like about this movie. So in Fantastic Beasts 2, The Crimes of Grindelwald, this film mostly is about uh, the character of Grindelwald played by Johnny Depp, who was introduced in the first Fantastic Beasts film through a series of events I can really can't explain to you if you haven't seen that movie. So make sure you are seeing that first Fantastic Beasts film or have seen it before going into this movie. So this character named Grindelwald, he's kind of the pre-Voldemort of the Wizarding World, since Voldemort's not around yet, and obviously Harry Potter is decades away from even being born, so he's not even in this um, part of the series yet either. So uh, Grindelwald's like the, the big bad guy, and he escapes through a series of events from prison because he was placed in prison after the events of the first film and after you got to see kind of all the terrible things he did in that movie. Um, so he escapes, and um, Newt Scamander is kind of trying to figure out what he wants to do. You know, he got to release that animal after the events of the first movie. So he's kind of trying to figure out how he can fit in and kind of move on with his life and successfully keep doing the things that he's always was planning on doing and stuff like that. But Grindelwald's out in the public. He's trying to gather people. He's trying to convince these people to follow him with these really horrible things that he wants to do. He's claiming that people who don't possess magic are going to do really horrible things like start wars, create explosions, create atomic war, create nuclear explosions. Uh, basically all these things that we are aware of as people in 2018 um, that have happened in our history and things that are happening in this universe that quite, haven't quite happened yet in history, but are eventually going to. So Grindelwald's trying to convince them, hey, let's get rid of the people who really can't possess magic, and let's just kind of get rid of them. We'll just make this a world where everybody who does possess magic will take over, will run the place, will just have people who know magic uh, run everything in the world, and let's get rid of anybody who can't possess magic at all. So basically that's the muggles, that's the nomadges that people keep bringing up in these Fantastic Beasts movie. Um, so basically he has a really horrific plan. Newt Scamander's aware of it. Um, he's very close still with Catherine Waterston's character from the first Fantastic Beasts and, um, you know, Dan Fogler's character and the girl that had a crush on him and stuff like that. So almost all those characters you remember in that first Fantastic Beasts film do come back in this one. Um, Zoe Kravitz is kind of this, uh, for those who know of Helena Bonham's character, Helena Bonham Carter's character from the fan Harry Potter films, uh, Bellatrix Lest Lestrange, I think her name was in those movies. Her character's name is just Lestrange. There's some type of other different name before her last name, but mostly she just, she just goes by Lestrange. Um, her and Newt Scamander kind of had this romantic chemistry going on, I guess you could say. So the film plays off of that and kind of where she stands with everything and kind of we can find out more about her past and things of that nature. So over the course of this movie, uh, Newt Scamander and his friends try to stop Grindelwald from forming this evil group that wants to get rid of people who can't possess magic at all. And he gets the help of Albus Dumbledore and many other familiar faces that we're going to be used to hearing and seeing from the Harry Potter films making their way as younger appearances into this movie. So... Um, that's basically what Fantastic Beasts 2 is about, is Newt Scamander and friends stopping Grindelwald from forming these group of followers that are trying to do really horrible things to people who can't possess magic. So, like I said, guys, overall, I really wasn't very impressed with this movie. I can't go so far to say this is a bad movie. 
I certainly can't call it a good movie either, though. Um, and that's really unfortunate because, like I said, I am a big Harry Potter fan. I've literally enjoyed every Harry Potter film up to this point. Uh, the first, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, the eighth. And, the, yeah, the Fantastic Beasts 1 would have been the ninth film. So now we're at the tenth film. And obviously it's hard to keep a franchise fresh a tenth time around. And unfortunately it's kind of the first not so great Harry Potter films. So let's go over some positives and negatives of why that's the case. So uh, for my positives, though, um, I really do like the theme of kind of muggles having a thirst for power, muggles, you know, figuring out that people who possess magic are very dangerous. So let's take care of them first before we move on with our lives, while the people who do possess magic and are evil, like Grindelwald, are like, hey, the people who aren't possessing magic are going to do horrible things to us. Let's wipe them out so that way people like us who do possess magic can completely wipe the, the slate clean and we could make this world nothing but people who possess magic and stuff. So I like that clash between our world and the wizarding world and kind of how it's it's us versus them and them versus us on that kind of matter. Um, so I did like that theme. It, it definitely is very relevant to things that happened in the U.S. history and with all the wars we've had and all the terrible violent things we've done over the years and stuff. Um, so I do like that idea of thirst for power, the fight between the wizarding world and the real world. I like that theme that the film plays off of with that. Johnny Depp also plays a great Grindelwald in this film. We see him for a little bit in the first one. We kind of got a flavor of him, I guess you could say, in the first film, but not like a full-on role. Uh, but he is a full-on role in this movie. He gets a lot of screen time, gets a lot to do. And I really like the character. I really, um, you know, it's not Voldemort. It's definitely not as good as Ralph Fiennes playing Voldemort in any of the earlier Harry Potter films. But considering that in the timeline of Harry Potter, Voldemort's not even around yet, um... I uh, I thought Johnny Depp played a great Grindelwald, and um, if we really do get more Fantastic Beasts film, I think Johnny Depp playing Grindelwald as a villain for this series is probably one of the more promising aspects going forward for this franchise. And I really do like the continuation of those earlier Fantastic Beasts characters from the first film, whether it is Dan Folger's character, the woman he fell in love with who does possess magic, or Catherine Waterston's character, Eddie Redmayne's character... Um, I think even the woman who kind of wanted to get Newt in trouble for doing those things in the first one, that um, African-American lady with a lot of power and had all those followers and stuff, so she has a role again in this one. Um, I liked the continuation of all those characters, so that was a cool thing to watch in this new Fantastic Beasts film. Uh, Zoe Kravitz does have a role in this film. For those who don't know who Zoe Kravitz is, uh, she was in Mad Max Fury Road as one of the girls that kind of was escaping um, the villain of that film. She also played one of the X-Men in X-Men First Class. She also was in... Oh, she's been in a lot of stuff, but those are kind of some bigger ones that she's been in. Uh, so she does play a character named Lestrange in this film, who's kind of loosely connected to Bellatrix Lestrange from the Harry Potter films that Helena Bonham Carter played. Um, and I liked her character, very mysterious. We kind of learn about her background. Uh, she really does want to be good. She really wants to be a part of Newt Scamander's life. But you'll find out over the course of this film, there's things that she does and has done, and things that she's guilty of that kind of make her feel bad and kind of conflict her with do I stay with the good guys so I can eventually become good or am I really that bad of a person where I have to go with the bad guys and so I kind of like the conflict of her character where she really wants to be good but she knows there's a lot of things she's done and is doing currently that is probably going to hurt her chances to be with the people who are good like Newt Scamander so I like the conflicts that her character keeps facing in this movie. There's also more international locations used in this movie. Definitely a lot more than what we saw in the Harry Potter films as far as just things outside of Hogwarts and stuff like that. Uh, the first Fantastic Beasts film was more so things going on in the U.S. in the 20s and stuff like that. Uh, this one's more so things going on in Paris and London. And uh, I think they go to Hungary at one point, the, the actual country of Hungary and stuff like that. So there is a more international flavor in this film, which I thought was pretty cool for this movie. The first and third acts of this film, for the most part, are pretty good. The film opens strong with how Grindelwald escapes, and the third act obviously wraps up with the whole, where's Grindelwald going to go next? Where does this franchise go next? What does Newt Scamander do now, now that 
all the stuff that's shown to, shown to us is happening and stuff like that. So uh, it, it opens strong and it ends strong. But in a minute, I'm going to go in the, to the negatives and kind of tell you why it's basically just those two bigger pieces and not so much the middle piece that works that all too well in this movie. For my negatives of this film, um, it is a very overly dark film. It really is a little too dark, I think, for a Harry Potter film. And given, you know, the last Harry Potter film, The Deathly Hallows Part 2, was a very dark movie. It had a very dark direction in the books. Um, it really is a little too dark. Um, the first Fantastic Beast film had a sense of humor. It was fun. Yes, it had its dark moments when it was appropriate, but it was fun. It had hum humor in it. Um, there was ways you could have fun without having tons of Harry Potter knowledge. This time around, it's just dark, dark, and then it's more dark. Uh, there's really not a lot of humor in this movie, which really was something very fun in the first one. They really don't have a lot of jokes in this one. Uh, given it is a darker subject matter they're taking on in this movie, but it's a little too dark for its own good. Also this time around, I really felt kind of bored. There's just a lot of scenes in the second act that are kind of boring. That they're, It's just, I, I need more going on. I need a lot more going on or less going on in some cases, as we'll get to in a minute. Uh, but there's just a lot of scenes where it's just very boring, very hard to sit through. You really were hoping for something more fun to watch, and certain scenes are just kind of boring in this movie, not very fun to watch. Uh, the CGI, I thought, was very weak this time around, and that's really too bad, because I thought the CGI in the first Fantastic Beast really looked wonderful. This time around, it's it feels kind of rushed. I feel like some of the rendering in the CGI doesn't look completed and stuff like that. It's it's too bad. The CGI really wasn't that great in this movie. And then, like I mentioned earlier, the second act, in between all the stuff of the, the opening and near the end, all the stuff going on in the second act really is not very good. Um, just not interesting, not fun to watch, uh, very boring. Uh, definitely something where it, it's a Harry Potter film. It really should feel more fun than this. And it's not. So act two of this film I thought was very poorly written. Also, I thought the whole thing with the unique animals that Newt Scamander takes care of in his briefcase and stuff. I thought that novelty kind of wore off in this movie. And that's really too bad. Like I said, in the first Fantastic Beast film, it was fun. The animals were unique. They had their own unique characteristics. This time around, I thought the novelty just kind of wore off. It just really didn't feel as special this time around. And that's really, I think that goes once again back to the writing is this, the novelty has to be good and strong the whole time. And if it wears off, the film's just not going to feel that fun. I also felt like this film either had too much going on or too little going on at once. There's so many scenes where there's so many characters running around doing so many different things and they're not connected and they're doing different things all at once. And then there's just as many scenes where there's just not enough going on, where they're just sitting around talking about random stuff or they're just sitting around talking about stuff that they feel guilty of and it just, just kind of doesn't really go anywhere. So this film suffers from either having too much going on at once or too little going on at once, and it just has a very bad balance as a result. I also feel like this film creates more questions than answers. Most of the questions I had going in from Fantastic Beast 1 just made me create more questions as the time the film was over with. It doesn't really answer anything or clarify anything. It just creates more questions, unfortunately. Um, also, I don't really like the idea of three more Fantastic Beast films uh, happening. I think... Every possible good direction you can go in at this point could just be done with two more films. I really don't see why it needs to be three more films. Could turn around. Maybe Fantastic Beasts 3 is absolutely amazing. It's the best Harry Potter film ever made. Hopefully. Hopefully. Um, and if not, I really don't know what else they could do. Um, it really just feels like a franchise now that just wants to be around because it makes money and people like Harry Potter. So... Hopefully there's going to be more reasonings behind, let's just keep making more of these to make more money. I really hope J.K. Rowling has at least one or two more really strong stories, much stronger than this one, that will really keep the franchise strong and fresh the next time around. So I'm going to give this film a 7 out of 10. There's good things going for it, but there's a lot of bad things going for it too. So I would say just do a red box rental for this one. At least that's my opinion. Um, okay film, just really not a great film.